I'm going to be bringing awareness and education to the medical anomaly called transverse deficiency, which my daughter was born with. As you can see, she doesn't have she doesn't have a right hand. She it stops at oh, can you be still for a second? Stops at the forearm, and she has four little nubbins. And they're literally called nubbins. That is the medical term. Um, now I did not know until I had her that that's what was going on. And when the doctor, after I pushed her out, when the doctor held her up, he was like, looks like there was some amniotic banding. I don't know if you all know what amniotic banding is, but the amniotic sac can get these bands in them, and they can wrap around certain um, extremities and cause deformities like that. So, for the longest time, we went around thinking that she had amniotic banding syndrome. Well, her pediatrician had referred us to Lexington Shriners Children's Hospital in Kentucky, in Lexington, Kentucky, to see Dr. O'Shaughnessy. And, <clears throat> excuse me, we get there. And Dr. O'Shaughnessy tells us that that's not amniotic banding, that it's something called transverse deficiency. And if it was amniotic banding, it would have affected more than one extremity. Um, so I started to struggle with that for a little bit because we'd done so much research and we thought it was one thing and then we get a different diagnosis telling us that it's something else. She said that uh, transverse deficiency is often mistaken for amniotic banding. Uh, she also said that, like, it's nothing that the um, mother did or didn't do. It just happens sometimes. And I wound up doing more research after that. And according to POSNA.org, which is a pediatric site, it only affects out of children born with a limb difference, it only affects 6%. So she's pretty rare. Um, Shriners Hospital also told us about this um, support group organization called the Lucky Finn Project. Get it? Lucky Finn, like Nemo. And so I reached out to them and I asked them if they had any more information on it to please let me know because I'm struggling with the new diagnosis because I thought it was one thing and now I feel like I'm back at square one, so on and so forth. And they gave me a lot of information. Yeah. Apparently it's a subtype of this other um, deformity that I cannot pronounce. I apologize for that, but... It starts with an S. I want to say Simbertodactyly. Anyway, they told me about, they confirmed the 6% the thing that I had found on the POSNA website. And then they went on to tell me, like, again, no one knows what causes it, but they believe it is due to a lack of blood flow in the first six to eight weeks. And again, it's nothing the mom did or didn't do. It's just something that happens. And I chose this to bring awareness to for obvious reasons because she has it. <laughs> but also, I feel like, <clears throat> excuse me, not a lot of people know about stuff of this sort. I never knew about it until having her. And then it's the craziest thing for me because after having her I actually have been seeing it like out in public more um social media more tv shows like it's very interesting and I'm wondering like is it really as rare as people think it is and it just hasn't been like made aware or 
maybe people have been getting misdiagnosed and not knowing and it's actually not as rare or am I just noticing more because I know more about it now and my child has it so I'm looking at people and like oh they look like her something to think about 